Now, I was about to begin recording my video for, um, uh, I was going to record some more of Mortal Kombat, I was going to record that, you know, that, the, the rappers video, but something else crossed my mind now. Do you guys look at the title here? New Frame Plus is an animation, is an animator himself. I just found this channel. So I'm not subscribed, but I'm definitely going to subscribe because I I love I already know this video is gonna be really good. So I heard this guy. I, listen, I had this was in my recommendation to be, and it, the title caught my attention. That's the thing. The title really caught my attention. Apparently, he's gonna break down on how you know, and like, like, and I think he's probably gonna be breaking down how uh, most how how most animation studios struggle. With the whole CGI thing and stuff like that. Because, you know, like, you look at most... Like, CGI is definitely... In anime... Now, I'm, I'm about to... You know, I was about to spit some game real quick. You know how most CGI and anime... They don't really look really... Good. We've seen it with Berserk. With the Berserk re uh, remake. We've seen it with Fist of the North Star. We've seen it with other anime... You know, anime titles and stuff like that. That the CGI thing does not always work. There's also, it's hard. It's definitely really, it's one of those games that's really hard to master. It's really hard to get down. It's definitely, be, it's one of those, and it, it, CGI is definitely one of those things that's kind of hard to nail, and you can definitely, and it's, you can, like, with sometimes, with an, like, CGI anime, you see it's kind of like a slideshow. It's it's not really, you can tell it's like the character models are really stiff. They're moving, like, it's like a five second, three second delay and stuff like that. It's really hard to nail down a great CGI, and I think what he's about to break down is that, how Arc System works is pretty much the uh, the pioneer of it all, and how they're like pretty much like the best game, like best gaming company to make like CG anime, CG CG anime video games, stuff like that. And I think that's what he's about to break out. And I hope I'm right about this, because other than that, everything I just said was pretty much pointless. But I think I strongly that's why I think what he's about to talk about. It's pretty much how Arc System works is pretty much the goats of uh of it all. So yeah. Make sure this is in the highest quality. Yes, it is. So, I'll be all ready. New Frame Plus, people. Let's see what we got. He's an animator Hello. himself, so. My name is Dan. I'm an animator, ahead. and this is New Frame Plus. Replicating the look of hand-drawn anime in 3D is a daunting challenge. Yes, it is. Even it's the tough, anime man. industry frequently struggles to produce CG results that don't fall into some weird animation. Yeah, you see how stiff the valley. character models look? It's just those? so easy to get a result that you know. feels vaguely wrong-looking. And look most how of the CG the anime moves. success look stories look like, seem to be like the shows like, which like, are willing to embrace their distinct 3D look. The same has largely been true for anime video games. Many now, games, game like Persona, developers have taken opinion, a crack at this same 3D anime challenge over the years, but nearly all of the successful examples are, are the games wise, which aim to heavily evoke the anime like, style like, without actually okay. trying to fool anybody into thinking that they're looking at a series of drawings. But there is one game studio out there who has been pushing this envelope further than any other, and that studio is Arc System Works. Yep, yeah, he, before I start talking about how they achieved this, I do want to point out, much of what I'm about to say here comes directly from a GDC talk given by technical animator Junya C. Motomura back in 2015. You can and should check that talk out yourself later. I will link to it below. So, Arc System Works as a company has been kicking around in some form since the late 80s. They've worked on a lot of things, but the genre of game they are most famous for is 2D Fighters. This studio is very very good at making beautiful, high-energy, competitive anime yes, fighting they are. games. We like, and the like anime I said, fighter we got that the originally put them on the map fighters. back in 1998 game was, was Guilty Gear. Guilty Gear as well. It was fast, it was stylish, They're known for Guilty Gear, but they blew, they, now, they, fast it sucks that they didn't get the recognition. Guilty Gear hadn't seen a proper sequel since 2002, and Arc System Works was looking to bring their pillar franchise back into the spotlight. But now that they had several other high-profile anime fighters on the market, like Blaze Blue and Persona yeah. 4 Arena, Guilty so Gear's stylistic niche was Persona feeling a Arena. little crowded. Blaze so rather than trying to compete with their own well. products, Arc hey, System Works man, looked for a way to gems. set the next Guilty Arc Gear System apart from the pack. And company, the choice bro. they oh ultimately goodness. made was it's that insane. the next Guilty Gear title would abandon its traditional 2D sprite animation in favor of fully 3D character models. Now, why would they do that, you might ask? These sprites are beautiful. 
Well, there are plenty of enticing incentives to switching a fighter to 3D. On top of giving your game a more modern look, with 3D animation, you can more easily support higher resolutions. You can make your animations smoother without breaking the art budget. And you can actually move the camera around the characters in dynamic ways when you want to, which has all kinds of exciting potential. It is for these reasons, and more, that many other fighting game franchises have made that jump to 3D over the years, and yeah. to varying degrees of success. But yeah. most of those franchises had taken that leap with the understanding that doing so would necessitate at least some degree of aesthetic change. Street Fighter, for example, went from looking like this to looking like this. Marvel vs. Capcom went from this to this. And Mortal Kombat went from this to this, and eventually to this. Yep. And each of these 3D overhauls more or less captures the spirit of their sprite animated originals, but those development teams had clearly embraced the fact that moving to 3D would inevitably require some aesthetic changes. A lot of changes. But Arc is System bad. Works went into stuff. the new Guilty Gear with a different mentality. What if they didn't accept that aesthetic change? Right, they took a different what if route, instead, which is probably they set why out to make their leap to 3D, 3D as invisible they as probably, possible they probably while get a lot still of reaping many of the benefits sucks, 3D has to offer. And so Arc System Works set out to tackle the challenge of building a two and a half D fighter. And that's with everybody, gaming companies are scared to do it. They're scared to do something like that, but Arc System said, nah, we're going to be different and step into that challenge, bro. We're going to step into that tunnel. Gaming companies are really fit, are really scared to take that extra next step and, to, and challenge themselves. You notice how other gaming companies took the whole 3D route. Now, Arc System Works took the 2.5D route and said, no, we are going to change it up and add our own flavor to it. And we're going to take our challenge of our own. They did. I applaud them for that because most gaming companies are scared to do something like that. 3D character models while still retaining the look of the series sprite based exactly. origins. Which and meant Arc they Systems were going to have to figure out it. how to make 3D anime look right. Fortunately, Arxis had some big advantages going into this project. First, they had a lot of 2D experience. Right, they already Their had teams had been producing 2D anime fighters for it. years. They were intimately familiar with the visual style that they now needed to recreate. And second, their team had actually been using 3D tools as part of their pixel animation pipeline for a long time. Every pixel art character in Blaze Blue began life as a 3D model. In order to streamline their pixel animation workflow, each character was sculpted and posed in 3D first to lay a foundation, and then the pixel artists would use that posed model as reference, which not only sped up the entire animation process, but also ensured more stylistic consistency across all the artists on the project. So Arxis had both the experience and the tools they needed to make yeah, this work. They, yeah, all that remained was was figuring out the, the how. We've been doing. We the first step was getting the new, fundamental uh, look version. of an anime character right, which they achieved through a combination of character model design, some really clever texture mapping techniques, and some impressive custom cell shaders designed to replicate the look of traditional anime character shading. They, they, Most they importantly, they they the application of this shading effect was highly customizable. The team's character artists could endlessly tweak and finesse how light and shadows fell across each character's unique features. What's more, each character got their own independent custom lighting. See, in most forms of 3D animation, you often want to make it look like your light sources are affecting every character or object in the environment similarly. It helps to sell the fact that everything in the scene is inhabiting that same 3D space. But in Guilty Gear Xard, every character has their own individual light sources which affect their body and nothing else in the scene. Shadows fell across each character's unique features. What's more, each character got their own independent custom lighting. See, in most forms of 3D animation, you often want to make it look like your light sources are affecting every character or object in the environment similarly. It yeah. helps to sell the fact that everything in the scene is inhabiting that same 3D space. Right. But in Guilty Gear Xard, every character has their own individual light sources which affect their body and nothing else in the scene. The later ah. versions of the game would add the option so for more like, dynamic yeah, scene-based like lighting, lighting but like this original really... approach to the problem was 
is really clever because it mimics the way those classic 2D sprites would have originally been colored, with each character having their own shading hand drawn in and no ability to change that shading based on the character's environment. So now they had the characters looking right, but there was still the remaining problem of getting them to look right in motion. Right, and that's, that's one of the main things that they And that's arguably an even bigger challenge, because anime has a very distinct it? animation how style. Would, how would it work? See, anime's unique look is a byproduct of its production limitations. Animating any television series is a challenge, because you've got to produce an entire season of TV on a fraction of the budget that most animated films get. That is a daunting problem, and the approach that TV animation studios around the world have developed to solve that problem is limited animation. Limited animation is a technique, or really a huge collection of techniques, that TV animation studios have been honing for decades. The goal of limited animation is maximum efficiency, to find as many cost-saving and corner-cutting measures as possible while sacrificing as little visual fidelity as you realistically can, all in order to get the most bang from your limited buck. This is why you so frequently see anime characters hold on a single drawing for as long That's as possible. That's true. Yeah, yeah, it's you all see about that animating light. performance and stick. actions well, using anime as few drawings well per second. You see that how they're like in the same position for a long time. They just stand in one position and they kind of freeze, not really make. Listen, each animation, each animation, each type of animation movement that you do. That's a lot of money going into that animation because, you know, animation, like, creating animation is really ex is expensive, you know what I'm saying? Creating this stuff is not easy, you know? There's so much money that goes into it, you know, each, you know, you know like, each type of, like, you know, detail and movement. That costs some quite bucks, so it, it kind of, it just, it just, it's a lot. It's expensive, you know? Animation is just really expensive to do. It's hard to do. It's not easy. You kind of had to be a master pro at it. Something you have to do. You would have to do since for years, man. And uh, it's crazy. And as you possibly can, while still making sure that you're doing enough drawings to adequately sell those right, actions. Right. You gotta pick how and few choose drawings can how you, you get away with. Things. And if you have to create additional drawings to make something look right, can you get away with only redrawing specific parts of the character? Maybe just their mouth their eyes, their hair or clothing. Sure, you can make this action look great with 10 drawings, but can you make it look great using just eight of them? How about six? Awesome, we can only afford three, so good luck. You see limited animation all over Western TV as well, and it's really fascinating seeing how different sectors of this industry have found different approaches and solutions to that same problem. But if you are wanting to truly imitate the look of anime specifically, capturing the feel of this limited animation style is the key. And Guilty Gear's animators achieved that by throwing out standard 3D technique and approaching their animation pretty much exactly the way 2D animators do. Rather than crafting a series of key poses for the computer to smoothly interpolate between, the animators treated each pose as a still drawing, a series of handcrafted 2D images. See, one of the inherent benefits to computer animation is the way the computer can fill in the gaps between your key poses. Like, if I put this ball on screen and I say, I want keyframes here, 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 and here, the computer can be like, oh, here, let me help you out, and make the ball smoothly travel from keyframe to keyframe, which can be really, really helpful. But what Arxis's team basically did was say, no, stop it. Just have the ball be here, then here, and then here, then here. And we have animatory terms for this, like stepped keys and held keys and whatnot, but the point is, by not allowing the computer to smoothly interpolate between their keyframes, Arc System Works as animators made it so that each pose they made behaved just like a 2D drawing would. Ah, and they could then I choose exactly now. how long they wanted each drawing to linger on screen before the next one popped in. Again, right. exactly the same as a traditional hand-drawn animation workflow. And basically wow. the same as their old sprite animation workflow, too, if you think about it. You can even see examples of them holding parts of the body still, just like a 2D animator would when they didn't want to have to redraw the whole thing for the next frame, while still animating secondary parts of the character, like hair or clothing. It is completely unlike how we would animate something in 3D normally, but it absolutely evokes the look of anime's limited animation. But that, my friends, is just the tip of the iceberg. Because to complete the look of 2D anime, the animators also had to add a generous helping of imperfection. 
See, perfection is something that computers are great at. A computer can make every moment perfectly smooth, every body proportion perfectly consistent, every light source and shadow perfectly correct. But hand-drawn animation, by its very nature, contains imperfections. Right, you'll see. Subtle variations in expression, slight changes in body proportions from one frame to the next. So, to maintain the illusion of something hand-drawn, the animators had to force 2D's imperfection back into the computer's perfect system, tweaking each keyframe ever so slightly to implement those flaws that make traditional animation look handmade. They also had to stylize and exaggerate their animations the same way 2D animators would, warping character proportions and exaggerating perspective intentionally for emphasis or dynamic appeal. This was made possible by the fact that each of these characters' animation skeletons contains far more animatable joints than your average 3D game character, sometimes over 500 of them. And that's something you can do when you've only got to render two characters on screen at once. This not only allowed the animators to deform and shape these character models to implement that imperfection I mentioned before, but also gave them freedom to warp the character proportions in some extreme and bizarre ways when necessary. And if all those joints weren't enough to do what the animators needed, like if the character needed to morph into some entirely different form, well, then they could just swap in another character model on the fly. Then there's the effects animation. Not only did they accentuate all of these character animations with some gorgeous hit effects and speed lines, all of which are animated 2D textures, but when necessary for certain effects, like the clouds of dust at a character's feet, they modeled those clouds in 3D frame by frame. Ah, you, you can and that, see that is too. bonkers. The way he Basically, it, in all things, the Arc System see. Works team had one edict. Kill everything 3D. If something felt 3D, you found a way to fix it. And as I have hopefully made clear at this point, the solution was, more often than not, quality tools and an extraordinary amount of brute force. To sculpt the character model, and the shading, and the posing, and everything the effects, just, and yeah, even the lighting if necessary, like frame up, by frame, until the entire game looked like a series of right, hand-drawn images. From the just up. like they with traditional animation, everything, everything on screen style, had to be an intentional and artistic choice, not a computer's automated solution. Right, and they the did results? It well, a lot of folks, myself included, didn't even immediately recognize that this was a 3D game when we first saw it. Usually, it wasn't until we saw the camera move for the first time that we stopped and said, wait a minute, no way, has this been 3D the entire time? Guilty Gear Xard may not always succeed in fooling your brain into thinking it's looking at a 2D fighter, but still, this is an amazing achievement. And that was just their first try. For their next attempt, Arc and System Works would face Dragon an Ball even greater Fire. challenge. Because creating a convincing faux 2D anime aesthetic for your own original property is one thing, but emulating the look of an established and beloved anime series? That adds a new layer of challenge. This time, Arc System Works couldn't just recreate an anime look. They had to successfully nail Dragon Ball's unique Literally, aesthetic they had and to, stay they had true to, to the animation of characters bro. that their target audience had likely easy. grown up with. And on top of all that, they actually needed to make it look better than those old right, anime it series. It looks exactly they had like to the anime. Just what a nostalgic DBZ fan sees style. in their head when they you think know? back on their favorite moments from the show. Like, and as one so who perfect. did not grow up with Dragon Ball, I confess that I cannot speak authoritatively on this one, but if the level of delight I've been hearing from Dragon Ball fans over the last year is any indication, I'm going to go ahead and guess that they did pretty good. And I really love seeing the subtle differences in approach and style between these two games. Like, for example, Dragon Ball Fighters has a different approach to smears, relying more on those classic old-school speed lines instead of Guilty Gear's smooth, stretched-out, solid shapes. I love all of the Dragon Ball-influenced posing on these characters, and most of all, I love that the animation in this game has slightly lower fidelity than the previous game in order to feel more true to the source material. It's in the way that the Dragon Ball fighters hold their poses for seconds at a time with only their mouths moving, the way they'll hold on a single frame longer than the Guilty Gear Xard fighters will, or, okay, look at Soul Bad Guy's idle animation. His name's Soul Bad Guy, by the way, Guilty Gear's bonkers, but yeah, look at his breathing. 
You see that expansion in the chest, the way it stretches out that buckle strap on his clothes? Yeah. That is a level of subtle motion fidelity that you are not going to see very often in a show like Dragon Ball. And right. you won't see it in Dragon Ball Fighters either, because it just wouldn't look right. Right. And the really exciting thing is that this whole approach Arc System Works has developed is still relatively new and unexplored. I mean, they've only really done this trick twice so far. But their third attempt is on the way. The upcoming Grand Blue Fantasy Versus looks to bring yet another subtle variation on the anime aesthetic. And Arc System Works is also the publisher for that new Kill La Kill fighting game that just dropped. Uh, granted, actual development duties for that one seem to have been handled by A Plus Games, uh, the same folks who made that also very nice looking Little Witch Academia game, but I can't imagine there wasn't at least some knowledge sharing happening between these two studios. Yeah, if there's uh... one thing that the production of these games shows, and it's something that Moto Mora has said himself, yeah. it's that achieving this look wasn't about developing some new, never-before-seen technology. It was simply a matter of applying the same tech we use for everything else toward a different visual target, right. it's and the being same willing to bend our production approach as necessary to achieve our aesthetic goals. Different. I cannot wait to see what Arc System Works has in store for us next, and I really hope to see more studios same take a way, crack at this sort of know, thing in the future. Again, definitely way, check out Junya C. Motomura's talk if you're interested in learning more about how they achieved this. He gets into more of the technical details, like the nitty-gritty of their cell shading and their texture work. It's all just so very darned cool. Also, a big thanks to Jeff Thu of Mother's Basement for double-checking my script on this one. If you are curious to learn more about the history of anime games, he actually made a video cataloging that very thing. I will link to it below. I hope you have enjoyed this. Be sure to subscribe and bell ring and all that other stuff if you haven't already, and consider supporting the show like all of these absolute champions. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time for more New Frame Plus. Yeah. That was nice. But, hey, that was a great video, man. Yo, he pretty much broke everything down to how everything, you know, how he pretty much broke it down, like, how the animation with animation with anime. He, he dived into literally everything, and I just love that. I love that the animation that just dived into anything, not just with video games, but with, like, with anime. They, 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 compared, they compared the two with video games and anime and movies and stuff like that, and he did ex ex exactly that. You know, I love how he just wasn't talking about, you know, Guilty Gear and Dragon Ball. He dived into other games and how, you know, they, you know, how they tried to do with the whole CG thing. It didn't really work out so well. And, you know, how, you know, how the creators do it. How do they create, how Arc System pretty much, you know, is the truth and the success behind Arc System works. And yeah, I feel like he did an amazing job with that. So, this guy got my subscription, bro. Holy smokes, what a great video. And, um... Yeah, man. But anyway, guys, you guys gotta let me know how you guys felt about that video. How do you guys feel about how Arc System, you know, how they, you know, how they, you know, made these amazing games and how they create such amazing, you know, great, great games like Blaze Blue, like Dragon Ball Fighters, you know, like Guilty Gear, you know, uh, you know, like how do you guys feel that they you know, that they create great games like that? How they're able to tackle it and how they're using the same formula for so long? It's just amazing how they just we able to step, you know, to step up to the challenge and just create something very beautiful. So, anyway, guys, this is, this is your boy Marcus Geek One. I'll see you guys in my next video. And um, yeah, stay, stay fresh, stay safe, stay fresh. And um, yeah, bye, Z. Man, good stuff.